The weather can be the number one thing that ruins a session when imaging. Planning around the weather can be made easy, however. In this video, we will go over five different tools you can use to plan around the weather. Hi there, my name is Dalen. Here at Astroscape, we go over all things astrophotography, starting from the very beginner level and working our way up from there. If you're new here as you're watching the video and you like what you see, consider subscribing. Let's get into it. So when imaging, we need to think about having clear skies, especially when we need to travel away from home. This can really help to plan ahead, that way we can get out there and get set up and maximize our time taking great images, even if we're only gonna worry about a few clouds rolling out of the way as we get to the site. But let's get into it. So the first thing you can start with is just the traditional uh, local website, your local news, um, AccuWeather, things of that nature. However, I do want you to uh, be aware of a few things. So anytime you're flipping through these and you see clear, clear has a different meaning to the local news than it does to astrophotography and astronomers. So they don't take things into account like haze and atmospheric conditions. Either way, it can be a great first step to at least get an idea of what the weather is gonna be like on the night you plan it on going out. So the rest of the tools in this video go a little bit more into depth for things we'll wanna know for astronomy and astrophotography. Here are the things you're gonna to wanna to look out for. So the first one is seeing. Seeing is the rating based on atmospheric conditions and the turbulence up there. If it's a bad rating, you'll notice the stars are twinkling. If it's very good, however, the stars will appear still. This can determine how much detail you'll get on the planets and the moon. Deep space objects are affected, but not as much as solar system objects. If you're imaging solar system objects, you'll want to pay attention to this more. The next thing we're gonna look into is transparency. This is essentially the haze in the air water vapor, smoke, light pollution, all of these affect this. So the thick haze in the atmosphere impacts the details in nebulae and faint galaxies. Star clusters and planetary nebulae are not as affected by this. Solar system objects are also less affected by this. So the last thing we need to think about is the wind, and this one is very simple. A shaky system equals an image that's not sharp. So as long as it's nice and calm out there, your images should turn out pretty great. So the first tool we're gonna look at is clear dark sky. So this chart shows an hour by hour forecast 80 hours ahead of the time when it was most recently updated. It has locations in the US, Canada, Mexico, and a few in the Bahamas. It lists cloud cover, followed by transparency, followed by seeing. The bottom row shows day versus night, which should be fairly self-explanatory, but I do want to tune you into one nice thing that they have recently changed that I do like. On the bottom row, you can see what's obviously sunlight versus nighttime. However, if you notice, it stays a little bit light earlier on and then it gets real dark. That's the moon, and that's the moon's visibility. So that's one cool thing to help you figure out where the moon is looking at this chart. This is actually fairly recent. I don't remember seeing this six months ago. Moving on to the second section, at the bottom it shows conditions on the ground like temperature, wind, and humidity. Now unfortunately there is no phone app for this, but it is good for planning from home. And if you're going to a popular location, say Cherry Springs in Pennsylvania or somewhere out in Death Valley, there's more than likely a location for you. Uh, like I said, uh, there's no European locations. However, you can submit to have a uh, chart built for you. All right, let's move on to the next thing, which is clear outside, which is basically the same thing as clear dark sky. However, it's a little bit more user-friendly, and I think that they've put a little bit more effort into some of the features. So a quick and dirty tip is that you wanna look for the green squares. That means it is good conditions for astronomy. So if we're looking at the forecast for today, you see all the red here and all the cloud cover. Currently, based on the time that it is right now, it's actually snowing. So it's a perfect time to record videos like this. However, if you look at tomorrow's forecast down on Saturday, you see all the green squares here and that there will be no cloud cover. So tomorrow night, maybe getting a daytime moonshot would be kind of cool. Some of the other info that you're gonna wanna pay attention to, it has a bar that shows when the moon will be visible, which is useful depending on your target. So if you're gonna do star clusters, this is perfectly fine. Another cool thing about this chart is that it does show when the ISS is gonna pass over. So this is great if you wanna plan a shot of the ISS while it's flying over and then go on to your deep sky target for the night. Another great thing down towards the bottom is that it shows the dew point, which is useful to know just in case you're out somewhere where it's very humid and you have to take your dew heaters. Another bonus here is that it has apps 
There are apps for days, apps on iOS and Android, and the chart pretty much looks exactly the same. So if you can read it on the website from home, you can read it on iOS and Android. Moving on to the last tool, and I think this one's pretty neat. Um, it's kind of like a hybrid of say weather.com and uh, clear outside and that is astrospheric. So instead of colored blocks, this shows more of a traditional map with cloud cover. So it also lists all the conditions we'd want to know, such as transparency and seeing. It also shows a nice graph with the temperature and the dew point, which shows if it'll get dewy. Another great thing about this website is that it pulls what looks like the map from darksightfinder.com. Uh, the overlay is pretty much the same, so this can help you find out uh, if maybe you drive an hour, you will be out in some darker skies. So up in the upper left there, there is a list of different maps you can check out. They're all pretty nifty, uh, like I already mentioned, the light pollution one. The smoke one during the California wildfires was actually pretty nifty to look at and uh, see how thick things were because it was timed around some events that uh, I wanted to go and shoot, but I couldn't because of the smoke. The last thing to note about this one is that there are phone apps for this as well on both iOS and Android. And they're laid pretty much the same, so the same graphs and maps do show up. If you found this video helpful, please do like and subscribe, and then let me know down in the comments. If you already use one of these, which one is your preferred go-to? If you don't already use one of these, which one is the one that you're leaning on being your preferred go-to? I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.